Hello everyone, in this video, I'm going to let you know about compound curve, its introduction and some key aspects to set out a compound curve on field. So let's discuss about compound curve first. Let's say that we are going to have this kind of straight road, but uh, we cannot continue with this road because of some obstruction that could be any historical building or anything which will not let us go through this particular area. So in order to tackle this, we need to provide a curve. Up till now, we have the knowledge of simple circular curve, which have constant radius throughout the length of the curve. Like this is a simple circular curve like this, which have constant radius of R1. Again, we are going to encounter an obstruction, let's say at this position, and we cannot continue with this curve. So in order to tackle this obstruction, we are going to have another curve which have different radius than this curve. From the curvature, you can see it has a smaller radius. Let's say that this curve has a radius of R2. So instead of continuing with radius R1, we are going to encounter with the obstruction. That's why we are going to choose another radius of R2 so that we are going to have a curvature that is not going to obstruct with this obstruction. So by doing this way, we are actually bypassing this obstruction. So now as a whole, from starting to the end, we are going to have uh, one curve, which is called compound curve. So compound curve is actually a curve that consists of two or more arcs with different radii. Like in this case, we have two different radius. Combining them together, we are going to have a compound curve. We could have uh, multiple radii, we could have three radii, but in this case, I have shown you the two radii only. So this is one kind of example of compound curve. There could be multiple other type of compound curve as well. Now let's discuss about some basic notation in compound curve. Let's say this is a back tangent. We are going to have a curvature. And uh, for this curvature, this would be the forward tangent and this will be the deflection angle for this curve. And this will be the radius of this curve. I have written as RS as short curve. Let's say that the start point of the short curve is represented with T1 and point with T2. And there is another curve having radius greater than that of the previous that is RL large curve. And this will be the forward tangent for this large curve. And the forward tangent of the short curve would be the backward tangent for the large curve. And this will be the end point of this large curve, T3. And this is the angle, deflection angle for the second curve. Because of having different radius, we are going to have the different deflection angles. So if this angle is deflection angle 2, this will also be deflection angle 2, the opposite angles. So if we extend this line and extending this line, we are going to have a point where this back tangent and this forward tangent are going to strike. And if we talk about the total deflection angle, so this will be actually the addition of deflection angle 1 and deflection angle 2. This can be seen in this sketch as well, like uh, this is the deflection angle 1 and this will be the de total deflection angle. So if we add them together, we are going to have the total deflection angle. Let's say that uh, this is the start point and uh, the B point is the point of intersection. C is the end point of this compound curve. D is the point of intersection for tangents of shorter curve. And E is the point of intersection for the tangents of large curve. The distance from T1 to T would be the tangent length for the short curve. Similarly, the distance from T3 to E would be the tangent length for the large curve. Keep in mind that this distance from T1 to D would be equal to D to T2. Similarly, for large curve, this distance T3 to E and E to T2 would be the same distance because these two are the simple circular curve and they are being combined to form a compound curve. But if we talk about separately, they are actually simple circular curve. So tangent length on both sides of the curve would be equal. And now the distance from T1 to B is being represented with TS, which is actually the total tangent length on shorter side. Similarly, the distance from T3 to B is TL, total tangent length 
on large curve side. So as a whole this AB is the rear tangent for this compound curve and BC is the forward tangent for this compound curve. D is the common tangent. The phi angle is the total deflection angle between rear and forward tangent for the compound curve. Phi 1 is the deflection angle between rear and common tangent. Phi 2 is the deflection angle between common and forward tangent at this angle. Similarly, T1 and T2 are the tangent points for the short curve. T2 and T3 are the tangent points for the long curve. TS is the total tangent length on shortest side, this side. TL total tangent length on the longest side, this side. TS is the tangent length for the short curve. TL is the tangent length for the long curve. Now moving on for the calculation of the data. This uh, phi angle already discussed. So that is actually the addition of phi 1 and phi 2. TS because this is a simple circular curve. So same formula for the simple circular curve is being used. R 10 phi by 2. For shorter side obviously the radius of shorter side and the deflection angle 1 would be used. Similarly for the long curve and if we talk about this common tangent that will be the addition of uh, the TS plus TTL and we know the formula for them so we can then calculate the length of the common tangent and if we want to calculate the length of uh, the short curve then radius of short curve and deflection angle 1 would be used similarly if we want the length of long curve then radius of long curve n phi 2 would be used what else Total tangent length on shorter side, how that can be calculated? That can be calculated by adding dt1 and the speed distance. dt1 is ds, but how about bd? How can we calculate this bd distance? So this bd distance can be calculated by considering this triangle where these two angles are known, but this angle can be calculated if we know the total deflection angle 180 minus Phi. Then by considering sine law we can determine this PD distance because this T distance and this is known. So then we can calculate PD by considering this and this side. So on simplifying then PD would be equal to the equation in terms of D and we know the formula for D. So then PD can be calculated. So the final formula for the TS, the total tangent length on the shortest side would be in terms of phi, phi 2, the length of common tangent RS and phi 1. Next is how we can calculate the total tangent length on the longest side that is actually equal to BE plus ET3. ET3 is already known that is total tangent length for the long curves that can be calculated. But this side can be calculated by again considering the sine law. This time these two would be used. So on simplifying B would be in terms of D. We know the formula for the D. So then the final formula for the total tangent length on longest side would be this one. Again the same variables as that we had in TS. Now in the last if we want to set out a compound curve so setting out could be done by any method you like but the most commonly method is the deflection angle method so as this compound curve comprises of two simple circular curves so the procedure would be same as that of the simple circular curve so let's say that this small circular curve would be set at first and then once it is done then we can start the setting out for the large curve and uh, if you are using the deflection angle method then in that case we know that the formula for the small deflection angle is 90 L over pi R. If we are doing the calculation for the short curve then the peg interval for the short curve and radius of the short curve will be used. Similarly for the long curve the peg interval for the long curve and radius of the long curve. So this is how the calculations for the compound curve is then. In the next coming video we are going to discuss how the calculations would be done for the compound curve like how we can calculate these all distance tangent length for the short curve, tangent length for the long curve, this total tangent length on short side, total tangent length on the long side, how we can calculate the changes at the different points and how we can set out the compound curve. So this is all from this video. I believe now you have got the concept about the compound curve. Thank you for watching this video.